Thank you, Matt. Afternoon, everyone. So Wembley in May, this is where and when so many of the prizes are handed out and they don't come much more precious or sought after than a place in the Football League. Fylde and Salford, one game from their footballing holy grail. Two clubs for whom all this looked an impossible dream not so long ago. Each have risen through the non-league pyramid and now find themselves on the brink for one the latest chapter and a different kind of fairy tale will be written today. Eyes on the price. Defeat is almost unthinkable. It is winner takes all. High stakes football. Dreams will be made and shattered today amongst these supporters. The pressure, pain and the pleasure of the playoffs really does make them unmissable and how we enjoy them. Today's presentation party, Brian Barwick, chairman of the National League, Mike Tattersall, the chief executive, and Al Andy Alderson, who just moved out of picture there, who is the founder and managing director of Vanarama, the league's sponsor. The scene is set then at Wembley. It will be an historic day for one of these football clubs. We will pause in just a moment as we have the national anthem at Wembley Stadium. A proud day for both sets of supporters here. Each of their clubs have never played, remember, in the Football League. historic it can inspire and intimidate in almost equal measure the class of 92 are here chris casper chris casper as well the sporting director at saltwood was in the middle of the picture there too so to the team news Salford are without their top scorer today, Adam Rooney, out of the injury that he picked up in taking a penalty in last weekend's semi-final win over Eastleigh. His place in the side is taken by Danny Whitehead, a National League title winner with Macclesfield last season. This is only his second start in 14 matches. Neil Wiseman and Pierre Gianni all started every league game this season. Captain Liam Hogan was born in Salford. Adam Virgo's been having a look through the Salford squad. He'd be picked out for us to keep an eye on. Well, I think he's a player that's been excellent this season in Carl Piergiani. Not only his goals have been absolutely influential to getting Salford into those playoff positions, but I think defensively he has just got stronger and stronger as the season's gone on. And when people looked at the likes of Danny Lloyd and Adam Rooney and Rory Gaffney, these players have come in to take Salford on. Carl Piergiani has had an outstanding season. It's the same file 11 that began their semi-final win at Solihull a week ago. Today, their player of the year, Jay Lynch, is a former Salford number one who won two promotions in three seasons with the Amis. Top scorer and National League player of the year, Danny Rowe, has 32 goals in all competitions this season. Who should we be keeping an eye on? Well, I, think the goalkeepers, I think the goalkeepers this season have had a massive influence on the playoffs. Luke Southwood, Jay Lynch in particular for Fylde, the penalty save from Jack Muldoon in the first playoff game was vitally important. He made some really important saves. And then second half against Solihull Moors, he was absolutely outstanding. And if I'll get anything from today's game, Jay Lynch will need to be outstanding in the sticks again. Well, Graham Alexander's third playoff campaign as a manager. He's won one and lost one so far. As a player, he was involved in playoffs seven times. Failed to win promotion in the first six before his Burnley side beat Sheffield United in the Championship playoff final a decade ago now. So, 
Referee for today, James Alden. Dave Challoner, another man with plenty of playoff experience. Captain Tranmere at the Old Wembley in the 2000 League Cup final. Lost 2-1 to Leicester. He has called this a million pound game. And I have to say, he's looked exceptionally relaxed in the lead up to this match. Could he be the difference maker? The National League's Player of the Year for a second season running. Nobody scored more goals than Danny Rowe in the regular season. Salford and Fylde, two clubs who've never graced the Football League. Both are chasing the dream. For one, it will come true today. For the other, it's back to square one. So 90 minutes, possibly more, to decide which of these clubs plays in the Football League next season. It really is winner takes all. Drama, delight and disappointment will all be experienced here today, Adam. Yeah, I mean, it's always a great game to be part of and especially for these two sides this afternoon, Adam, the biggest game respectively in the history of their football club to become a Football League side. I think this is a really, really tough one to call. I'm pleased that Danny Whitehead is coming to that midfield for Graham Alexander's side. I think that was an area missing against Eastleigh. Where in a big pitch today, you need a bit more control on the ball, and I think Danny Whitehead can certainly provide that. Well, with the chip forward here to Bradley, and Reed's waiting in the middle, and he almost got to it as well. What a start that would have been for Fylde. Of course, at this point of last season's promotion final, we'd already had a red card with <laughs> Liam, Liam Ridehouse, hadn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And we almost had the first goal there. And it was almost there. Bradley making that run down the outside, and Liam Hogan could make the challenge. When you run across somebody, you can sometimes kick their ankles. So unlucky there for Alex Reed not to get on the end of it. An encouraging start there from Fylde. Played in these big playoff matches, Adam. How important is are these first few minutes? I think defensively is the most important area. I'm not too bothered in the first 15 minutes if you don't create too many chances. It's defensively if you set up properly and you'd be hard to break down, then that feeds on confidence further up the field. Weissman now. This away with Whitehead making his way into the middle. Wiseman with the ball in there. And thump forward by. Francis Angot. Mafut. Piagiani, who got 10 goals in the regular season, the centre back, and of course scored in that playoff semi final win over Eastlip. Pont, who had to go off injured in the semi final. It's thought that they super glued a cut on his head, a very significant cut on his head. Wearing some protection understandably for that so that and Rudy in the side it was important that we have Nathan Pond back in the side just to look at the line of Salford not quite there as a back three and it's a great ball line. I was just talking about when Bradley run across Hogan net it's very easy for the Salford centre half just to clip his ankles that's a brilliant ball across there and it's really just an inch off from scoring a Wembley goal 46 game regular season and now it's all on this promotion for the winner the losers go back to where it all began certainly is a, a date with destiny for Salford and Fylde the biggest game in their respective histories how will they handle the occasion it's blocked by Hogan it's cleared by Redmond the pick goes to Diasarua Torre, Whitehead has continued his run here. Chance to cross for Torre. Yajani with the cushioned header to Maynard, who grew up around 10 minutes from Salford. One of four local lads in the Salford team. Here's Wiseman. Did that a play here by? St. Francis Angle. Well, I think it's important that Danny Whitehead is back in the side this afternoon, Adam. 
I know he hasn't played too much towards the end of the season, but I just think against Eastley, they didn't have that midfield run-up, they didn't have that control in midfields, and could have started with Gaffney this afternoon. But I think that extra midfielder for Salford will be important. Salford born, Hogan, the captain with the throw in. Phyllis Kirk, crows down. This is Reed, who's got plenty of pace. Burke, the runner on the outside, and he looks for Reed again. And Reed with the attempted shot, which was blocked by Piagiani. It's a great ball there from Lou Burke, because the only ball he had was to cut back to Reed. Rowe, who thought about the shot, I think, initially. He loves to strike them from distance, does Rowe. Bradley was dispossessed. Whitehead. Redmond. Plenty of time and space here for Wiseman. Redmond's continued his run. He's been picked out as well here by Wiseman. Three in the box here for Salford. It's a decent pullback, and it was Crow's down who got an important touch there for Fyatt, who now can look to counter, but Hogan halts that in its tracks. Whitehead decides to have a go. Good intent, good ambition being shown by both teams in the opening five minutes. So the same five minutes into the game, Adam, I think Fyatt has started better on the ball. I mean, this is a real concern for... No Channel and Luke Burke down. Seems very uncomfortable with his hamstring. And could this be an early blow to Far because Burke has been very important to them in that right back position, a former Wigan Athletic under 18s chairman. Uh, David Haythorn Thwaite, man in charge at Fylde, has invested so much of his own time and money. He was persuaded over a pint in 2007 to get involved with the club by a good friend, Di Davis. He went on to be the president. They had that plan, don't they, to reach the Football League, put in place by David Haythorn Thwaite by the year 2022. They could be ahead of schedule. Well, they could be. It will be quite an expensive point to get there, but <laughs> the <laughs> job that they've done off the field, as, as Gary Neville was saying before the game, Adam, kind of a magnificent job. They've done it in the right way. A lot of the games, haven't they, over quick succession straight away. Signaling to the bench. And he's in a bit of discomfort. It's a concern for Dave Chaloner. Doesn't have too much cover in that position on the bench. Oh, it looks like they're going to give him the opportunity to prove his fitness here. Luke Burke. down to 10 momentarily here at Fyatt. Burke having to stay off the pitch, having received treatment just for a moment. Torre now for Salford. Burke is back on. David Beckham has uh, all of his children here today, Brooklyn, Cruz, Romeo, Harper, all in the crowd. Torre with the long throw. And to be struck by Wiseman! That wasn't far away. It's a decent strike there from Scott Wiseman. And the reason it is, Adam, because he's a controlled shot from him. Sets himself brilliantly. He takes his time. So he positions himself nicely there. And it's kind of like a stab strike. Uses the laces brilliantly. It's a close step. Good attempt there, though. Spent so much of his career, Wiseman in the Football League, the Championship, League One, League Two, he's played in all those divisions. And Gibraltar International as well. Well with the pass, looking for Bradley. Oh, goes down here, the challenge was by Pons. And it's a yellow card that's been shown to the Salford defender. Yep, certainly a yellow card in my opinion. Always say, don't allow the ball to bounce. It's good anticipation there from Bradley. I think Pond just had enough cover around him, though. So as we move into the 10th minute at Wembley, 
A real opportunity here for File to test the Salford goalkeeper, Chris Neal, who was the hero of the shootout against Eastleigh, but this is right in range for that man right. It's a great range for him, Adam. I think the way that he strikes the ball, he gets quite a lot of power on it, so I think sometimes the further back it is, he'll give him that opportunity to get it up and over the wall. I think for Chris Neal here, the, the problem that he's got, Danny Rowe can go either side, he can go goalkeeper side, and this is where you need to set your wall up properly, and you have to trust your wall. The minute Chris Neal takes a step to his left, Danny Rowe can put it to his right. Just the sort of position that Danny Rowe loves to exploit. It's Rowe for Fyatt, and it's off the wall. Couldn't quite get the elevation that he needed there. The National League's top scorer, but here's Francis Angle. Bradley. with the ball in. Maynard. Here's Ruin. Wide it comes here for Wiseman. And Redmond's made a really good run into the box. And Whitehead with the shot. Good Salford move. That's a good move there. And the way that Graham Alexander's side is set up, is it for this purpose? Scott Wiseman can get loads and loads of width, and then you need your midfield runners, and it's going to be Whitehead and Redmond are going to make those runs to offer a little bit of support to Dia Sarue. Yeah, they've had an average gate of around 2,500 at Salford this season. It's a brilliant day out for... And there's a growing fan base. Here's Rowe. Chased here by Bonds. There's Karen Bird, an accountant by trade. She's really the chairman and the heartbeat of Salford City, has been there pre class of 92 days when there were crowds of 250. And would you believe, for the lady who has to have meetings with Gary Neville probably most days, she's a Liverpool fan. <laughs> Apparently the first meeting that they had back in 2013 was the day after, or was meant to be the day after her Christmas party that year, and she said she, she couldn't make it the day after her Christmas party. The only person she would have turned up for, I think she said, was Robbie Fowler. <laughs> and it's a relationship really does seem to work. Seeing Salford move up the leagues very quickly indeed. This is a different kind of fairy tale. We know there are those within football, football fans who aren't all approving, maybe, shall we say, of the way Salford have done things, the investment, Adam. But when you look at behind the scenes, since the class of 92 became involved, there is so much that good that they have done in the local community as well, I and mean, we shouldn't ignore that. No, not at all. I think they've done a magnificent job. I thought they've, been, they've brought a good level of credibility to the National League. As you mentioned off the field that the youth team they've got in place, the women's team I've seen here this afternoon as well, they're paying for fans away travel to get them to their away games and you know special prices during the week when there's other midweek games on going on around them. So there's a real foundation there to do things properly. But for them today, the main thing is getting that win and getting into the Football League and progressing on, because we've seen clubs that have won here today go on and do very well. Oh, by the foul captain, Byrne, on Diasarue. And Pierre Gianni, one of those coming forward from the back here. What a goal threat he is from set pieces as easily saw in that playoff semi-final when he scored from a free kick. A headed goal. Redmond and Whitehead, the players stood over this. 
Definitely. Moving to the 15th minute at Wembley. Still we await the opening goal here. Floated in by Redmond. Oh, and there's a big chance. And that's it. A mistake at the back. And it's been seized upon by Diaz Aurora. Graham Alexander's side in front of Wembley. And it's one of the easiest goals he'll have scored all season. Well, it's a great finish from Manny diaz -Urue. But you need to defend this a lot better. The clearance has to be better when the ball comes in from Redmond. And it's Danny Rowe that doesn't really clear it properly. Ends up coming off Burke in the end. And it just falls nicely to diaz -Urue, who finishes calmly composed in front of goal. It's a fortunate way to get there, but you still need to do the job and finish it. And he was a player who found himself out of the team, out of favour at Salford partway through this season. They sent him on loan to Chester in the league below. He's come back to the club and he's become a really important player and leads the line today and scores the opening goal at Wembley. So defensively reliable filed of late, Adam, but they weren't there. No, disappointing there for Dave Channon. I think he would be looking at this area of set plays. They would have worked on that. The likes of Hogan, Pierre Gianni, Pond, really not in the side today. Still offer a good bit of physical presence at the back, but wasn't the best clearance though from Danny Rowe. Off his own teammate, but still an excellent finish there from Dia Sarue. Played forward by Francis Angol to fill a skirt. We've got that winning goal at Solly Hull in the semi final. The fight, Crows there. Fill a skirt. Bradley. And a down here from Rowe to Francis Angol. Rosedale, Bond, Burke, these sides third and fifth respectively in the regular season, Salford ended up four points above filed, not against fifth is actually the most common combination of teams in National League promotion finals over the years. This is the seventh time it's happened, and the third place side has won every single one of the previous games. And it's the third place side who are in front here. The Isarua. Filed a readying an early substitution. Nick Horton is going to be coming on for the Coasters. Big day it is tomorrow and the Premier League will be right across all the action what's happening on BT Sport score tomorrow from 2.30 that's on BT Sport 1. Crowsdale who has filed record signing an England C international. Bond, Burke, we couldn't get there before Pond. Cliff. Now Neil Burr, the Forest youngster, played forward by Crowsden. What have you made of the reaction from Fyle to that goal for Salford? Not, not great to be honest, Adam. 
Everton need to keep the ball better. And what they're trying to do is Rowan Reed are, are splitting between the width of the 18-yard box and then allowing the likes of Bond and Bradley to try and make those midfield runs in between them. And they're not keeping the ball well enough to get those two. You can just see them in the top of your screen there, the 6 and 15. But they need to try and get them into the game centrally. And that's what they're trying to do. But they have to keep the ball slightly better in the opposition's half. Oh, Burke here picked up what looked like some kind of hamstring tweak in the early stages. Is the player who's having to be taken off here. What real disappointment for him. Uh, Wembley final. But one door closes, another opens, and it's a chance this for Nick Horton, who's a former Salford player, only left them last October to join fire. That's the only changes that Dave Challenger has made in this playoff run to the final. Horton starting the first game, and then Reed coming in against Solly Holmores. And seeing ahead of this match, Dave Challenger the feels Wembley will suit his players. And that he had no fear that. His team will handle the pressure, handle the occasion. I just thought it was interesting as well that you'll hear some managers say you just need to treat it like any other game. He said, no, you, you can't treat it like this, uh, like any other game. It's a really, really big game. <laughs> I think it's one of the biggest games in football, to be honest. To get, to get that back into the, into the Football League is absolutely massive for both of these sides and all the National League sides. Horton. Whitehead. Movement from the goal scorer, Diaz Arua. Redmond shows for it too, but it comes back here to Maynard. Wild have it back, and it's Danny Rowe, their top score. Horton. Gets away from Mafuta. Finds Rowe here. A touch was from Reed and a fairly routine save for me. I'd say 25 yards out. That man there on your screen is always going to be looking up to try and get a shot towards Chris Neal's goal. Doesn't quite get the power in the shot that he's used to. I'll we'll say with the change now of Luke Burke coming off and Andy Bond now will fill in the right back. Early on already, he's really pushing up, so there is a gap down the outside for Torre to, I think, really capitalise on. He's not a natural right back, he's more the central midfielder, but he's a player who likes to bomb on as much as possible. I think the two wing-backs in particular make it into good areas, especially down that left-hand side now without a natural right-back being there. Tony Cliff here finds Burnt. Bradley. of 92 bought Salford, Gary Neville there, contacted, filed actually for some advice on how to run a non-league club, but he was given that advice by David Haythorn, Thwaite on the right there. Yeah. Welcomes uh, Gary Neville on a visit actually to Mill Farm, the home of Files. Dave Challoner had a chat with him as well. I think there is an appreciation actually between Gary Neville and the rest of the class of 92 for the, the help that Fylde gave them in the early stages of their involvement with Salford. A good feeling between the two clubs, but only one can be promoted today, and it's Salford in front here. Here's a rule. Torrey, former Everton youngster, to take the throw in here for the Amis. Here, Gianni to hit it. And given as a corner kick here. Looks like the majority of his goals this season, Carl Gianni has come with his head. Not a bad attempt there. Maybe not took a deflection because the reaction after was to run back, but James Oldham gave the corner in the end. There's a big gap there, you can see that across the penalty spot. So you'd expect the ball to be floated in that the area. I'm surprised that someone from Fylde's not sitting there.
Toure, the left wing back, has gone across to take this for Salford. There's the signal. It's a good run into the box. And close, wasn't it, from Pomp? Which has really floated in very well. I think the foul would have been given against Pond in the end on Alex Reed. trailing here but they might take some comfort some confidence from Salford's recent defensive record we conceded conceded seven times in their last four matches I've been defending really well prior to that I've only conceded one goal in nine games but just of late I don't know whether it's nerves the end of the season what it is Salford haven't been defending quite as well he hasn't quite got them over the line has he but when he went to that back three and he went with Mafuta and Maynard in midfield and to like Danny Whitehead ended up losing his place in the side as well as Tom Walker there's a bit more physicality about Salford City it's nerves at the end of the season the unpredictable results always go against you sometimes they seem pretty okay so far I think Graham Alexander will be pleased with his side start for the first five minutes they're a little bit slow at the trap but I think they've settled into the game nicely and Chris Neal has been pretty pretty quiet in the goal so far down by Rowe here, Neil, but gets the kick away. Wiseman. Mafuta. A reminder that we must get a winner here this afternoon. Extra time and penalties, both possibilities. Bradley from a long way out. Certainly covered there by Neil. It's the first time really that Dan Bradley's coming in off that line, that central area, I was saying that they were picking up him and Bond it was originally. Tip towards goal, I think Chris Neal would have been comfortable with that one going past his post. And have had an extra day's rest in Salford. Solly Hull in the semi-finals a week ago today. Salford were taken to extra time and penalties the following day by a, a valiant Eastley. Rowe. Phyllis Kirk finds Horton. Francis Angol with the run down the left. Trapped by Redmond. Francis Angol with the ball overhead. Clear by Hogan. Drops for Horton. Back it comes here to Danny Rowe. Really got hold of it, all the power was there, just not the direction. He's finally got his attempt towards goal there, Danny Rowe. And same goal getting down that left-hand side, it was Mafuta that got caught originally in that midfield. Getting another shot off target. And he's got 32 goals this season, but only two in his last ten. the FA Cup final here at Wembley a week ago uh, a week today I should say Manchester City against Watford our coverage begins at four o'clock on two and in 4k and then we have the non-league finals day starting with the FA Vars Chertsey Town against Cray Valley our former winners of the FA Vars and then it's the trophy final filed in action again here it's Mill Farm South, isn't it, Wembley at the moment? Filed against uh, Leighton Orient. It's Sunday 3.45. Shot from distance. Hit by Crowsdale, saved by Neil. Yeah, a better save there from Chris Neil. Much more encouragement for Fylde now. Passing the ball forward early with more of the purpose. And that means that Solvon are just dropping back a little bit deeper. And these central areas that they want to pick up, they're now starting to find... Skirt plays it against Whitehead for the corner, and they're not happy at how far Whitehead was there from the initial corner. It was about two yards from the original kick when it was taken. Yeah, Whitehead's still there. And they again, play it short. Row. Yeah. 
looking for him so far. Not yet. What a season it has been in the National League. Very entertaining, and you can see the review of the campaign next Sunday, 6.45. That's on BT Sport 1. Both managers looking far from content. <laughs> they never will until this final whistle goes, Adam. So the pressure on both of these sides are absolutely huge. I think now coming in the half an hour of the game, I think Dave Chandler will just be slightly more disappointed. Forget about the result, I think Salford now settled into the game a lot better now. It's not quite clicking for forward, is it? Whitehead. This away is the furthest forward. Redmond, former Manchester United youth team player. In the same group as Marcus Rashford. Once actually said that he felt that uh, Redmond was the best player in his group. At it, uh, when they were in the under 11s. Crowsdale. Burr. Rowe. Across it comes here to Francis Amber. Phyllis Kirk. Crowsdale. Just playing in that central a little bit more. I think you don't want with Fard Adams that they're trying to force the shot a little bit too much now. And Danny Rose had one or two chances where I think the cross would have been better. Maybe an extra pass and then they create a bit more space for a shot to happen. Bonds. Horton. Bonds gone for the return. He's got the return. And that's a great chance to equalise for Fard. What a chance that is to Andy Bond. This is the extra pass I'm talking about now. Great little position there, sets it up perfectly and you'll be disappointed with that one, not to hit the target. It's been Fylde's best chance of the game so far. It's so far have got away with that one. He was a winner of the National League North playoffs with Barrow just over a decade ago now. Andy Bond. He's played at Wembley before as well with the Bluebirds back in 2010 in the FA Trophy. He stopped for a head injury here to Files Jordan Tunnicliffe. He's been a key part, Tunnicliffe, of this defensive improvement that Dave Challoner's side have seen this season. Conceded 15 goals less in the regular season than they did in the previous campaign. So it's an irony, really, Adam, that it was a, a defensive lapse, a mistake at the back that's cost them so far in this game. Oh, disappointing, net. I think it's been physical at the top, isn't he? Dear Sirue up against Berman, Tony Cliff, and this time Tony Cliff coming worse off. Yeah, going back to the point, I think they'd be disappointed with the manner of the goal. Wasn't the best clearance from Danny Rowe. as an opportunity to get his message across, but here's the goal that separates the sides. You see Danny Rowe just at the top of your screen there. With his quality, I mean, there's a case for an offside, but you'd be brave to give that one. Just a disappointing clearance there, no real conviction. Comes off of your own player. But it's a good finish, you have to say that. Took his chance well. Second spell under Graham Alexander Diaz Rue, who gave him his Football League debut on a loan at Fleetwood. Of the, the full contingent, don't we, of the class of 92? I think that's the first time we've seen Ryan Giggs today. Late night. <laughs> <laughs> 
It could be tonight. <laughs> it certainly could be at the minute. Things are going so far for Salford. And this I'm reliably informed 23 years to the day since all of the uh, class of 92 involved with Salford were part of that Manchester United side that uh, won the FA Cup final against Liverpool, the Cantona final, the White Soup final, you might remember it as. Talk about years to the day as well, it's uh, 11 years to the day since filed uh, when the FA Vars here back in uh, 2008, as Tunnicliffe continues to be patched up. I thought he was excellent in the semi-final against Solly Hull. I think it's been magnificent this season. I think him and Neil Byrne have been that partnership that I think has really been solid for Fylde this year, what, what they were missing last season. And I think that's taken them on to that next level to be more competitive this year. So he's got goals in him as well from set plays. Said he was very excited, but not too nervous ahead of this game. Dave Challoner. Into the final ten minutes of normal time here, but clearly this stoppage will mean that will be a fair bit added on at the end of this first half. Can Fylde get themselves on terms before that half-time interval? Whichever of these sides go up, it won't have been without the aid of significant financial investment for this level. I don't think anyone at either club could or would deny that. There is this, theirs is perhaps a, a different kind of fairy tale, if we're to put it like that, but to their supporters, to those involved, it matters no less. Pier Gianni got above Reed. Horton, movement from Reed in front of him. Maynard with the challenge. Horton goes down and gets the free kick, and he's done well since coming on the substitute. I think he's picked up some really good positions, and sometimes things can happen, i.e. an injury that changes the concept of a game a little bit. But when he goes into that central position from the left-hand side, Farder found him early. I think Maynard's lucky to get away with the yellow card there. It's a, a losing playoff finalist with Tranmere. Back in 2017, Lois Maynard. Now, is this too far out for Danny Rowe? No. In a simple answer, he just needs a little bit more control. I think a few shots he's had early on, he's rushed them a little bit. And when he strikes the ball really well, it's when he's relaxed. You know, like the goal that led to Harrogate's second, Andy Bond's goal against Harrogate. Just struck it brilliantly. Here comes Danny Rowe, again, like his earlier effort, comes off the wall. Horton, Francis Angol had made a good run. Horton decided not to use him, and he works the room for the shot. Really good block, though, by Mafuta. Great block there. I thought maybe just taking off the angle a little bit there for Danny Rowe to then come on and strike it. He all ends up breaking on, and that's where you can sometimes get a deflection, but fairness to the wall, they've jumped well and they've been brave. He does strike a decent football that can hurt if it hits you. I've got to say, Adam, I've watched just about every, as of you, every level of football you could imagine. And I haven't, I don't think I can say I've seen many footballers with a better hit than Danny Rowe at any level. I can, can't argue with that. But he's not really shown it today yet. No, not yet. And I don't think he's shown it in the playoffs so far. And that's the disappointing thing, apart from that one shot from distance that led to Andy Bond's goal against Harrogate. I haven't seen the best of Danny Rowe in these playoffs so far. He's got two good feet, and that's what's so difficult. If he's showing down the line, he can still use his left foot, or he can chop back in onto his right, and vice versa. Oh, by Horton on Mafuta. Former Bristol City under-21s captain Gus Mafuta started out at Colchester. He was the 12th signing of last summer by Salford. It was a complete rebuild really on the team that had got them promoted last year but they've gelled pretty quickly really finished third in the regular season but will Salford now reach the 
promised land of the Football League via the playoffs. They're in the box seat as it stands. Sent forward by Hogan, Piagiani won his header. Couldn't quite find Dias Arrue though. here for Reeds and that rowing support but that's only done by Hogan and now it's kept in by Toure Francis Anger Fulton Some nice football files, one of the sides who are probably among the easiest on the eye in the National League. Harrogate, you could say, are up there in that respect too. And it isn't about being pretty, it's about being effective on days like this. They've not been able to break down Salford yet. Bradley. Over the head of Reeds, flicked on by Piagiani. Bombs content to take the throw in here. That's five minutes of the first half. Phyllis Cook. Bond. Phyllis Girk. Nice turn by Horton. Burn has found Crowsdale. Can they just up the tempo? I better wonder here. Francis Angle into Danny Rowe. Francis Angle on the outside, Rowe with the cross into the box, just too high for Reed. Bond has Touré for attention. And the shot is wide from Crosdale. That's good play there from Fabe. had to be patient, purely because Salford City really narrowed across the 18-yard box. So they had to try and work it left and right. Not on his natural foot there. Yeah, much better there from Fabe. Yeah, it's so unfortunate for Adam Rooney to get that injury and taking that missed penalty in the semi-final victory over Eastley. 38 games in the regular season, scored 21 goals as well, but unavailable to Graham Alexander today. Can they do it without him? Redmond. Wiseman to White. Recipient, Redmond, Crowsdale. Down was by Reeds. This is Gus Mafuta. Scott Wiseman. Redmond only had Diaz for Ruway to aim out in the middle. In 2010, he was a, a mascot at Wembley. Devontae Redmond, when his dad was playing for Barrow in an FA Trophy final victory. This is how surreal it is to be playing at Wembley. I'm sure several of the players will have felt like that. And I think it's always so important, isn't it, with these National League promotion finals, Adam, that the players, all of them, actually come to the stadium the day before to almost get the pictures out of the way, get the wow factor out of the way, and then it's, it's match day head on when they come on the uh, promotion final day. Yeah, certainly a lot for players to take in, isn't it? And I think more and more now, don't you see the players come here the day before and with their pictures taken and get a real feel for the stadium. So they can just concentrate on the game that's in hand now. Horton. Bradley. 
Just a lack of punch at the moment about filed in that final third, a lack of conviction. I think Salford is certainly there to be got out of them. I don't think they've shown too much since getting that goal. There's always going to be a tight game between these two sides. It was always going to be that. Maybe a mistake or a bit of brilliance would be the difference. He said if they'd been offered this situation pre-season, Dave Challoner, that they would most certainly have taken it filed. They find themselves a goal down the coasters as we move towards added time at the end of the first half at Wembley. And seeking what would be their second promotion in three seasons, having come up from National League North in 2017. Salford seeking back-to-back -back promotions, no club since the National League was set up. And 79 has ever gone from in sixth tier to the Football League in back-to-back -back seasons. That'd be a first if Salford can pull it off here. Maynard. Maynard driving forward here for Salford. No free kick, says the referee. And to what is six minutes have added time at the end of this first half. Horton looking to go on the outside. Good strength shown by Mafuta. The referee had initially played an advantage there because there was a foul by Horton on Mafuta. And Horton eventually went down, he's given the free kick Salford's way here. So much of today's script still to be written, but one thing we know for sure is that a club with no previous Football League experience will be promoted to that level for the second time in three seasons. Forest Green went up in 2017 and have remained there, even reaching this season's League Two playoffs where they trail, don't they, from the first leg. 1-0 against Tramley. Wiseman. But Wiseman will hit the byline here, he's got options. He couldn't quite get it through to Whitehead. Been kept in by Horton. Body clear by Hogan. Now Crowsdale, that's a nice turn. And this is a bit of space for Bond to explore. Nathan Pond, Tony Cliff's head. Burn the captain, Crowsdale. in towards Reed. the goalkeeper's come a long way and that's a good claim by Chris Neal. Well, it's been pretty quiet Chris Neal in this first half and this is sometimes a situation when you haven't really had too much to do you end up making a mistake but you have to say that's good hands from him. So two penalties in that shootout victory over Eastleigh last weekend. He was once awarded a year's supply of pizza for keeping a clean sheet in the FA Cup. That was for Fleetwood against Leicester. It's an arrangement that they had with a club sponsor. The picture looked funny though with all the pizza piled up next to him. <laughs> Here's Torre. Don't get to clear. Francis Angon. Check of the watch from the referee, James Oldham. 
Still we go on here at Wembley at the end of this first half. Reed. Miscontrolled by Crowsdale. Mafuta. He made it the first half. Alan. Edgy. I think certain areas that lack of quality is there to be seen, and that's always going to be inevitable for these, these players to get over the finish line. Certainly the goal, certainly a bit of fortuitous, a bit of luck there for Graham Alexander's side, but you still have to take your chances. Oh, just in that final third, need to do a little bit more on the ball, Adam. So I think Solford have dropped off. I don't think Solford have really offered too much in this first half so far. Trying to offer a little bit of support to Dias Arue up front, but they're happy to stay in there defensive units when they don't have the ball. Phyllis Kirk. Burn gets it wide to Bond. Burn. Well, that's the pass that was intended for Crowsdale, and now it's Maynard. Redmond is the player inside. Wiseman's making a run outside of him, read by Francis Angot, and filed to have it back again. Horton finds Crowsdale. Danny Rowe is the player who's peeled wide here. Runners getting forward for Files, and it was coming over to Bradley, but it was Hogan who made sure it didn't reach him. That's a loose pass. Horton. Francis Angle. Phyllis Cook. Francis Angle. Now Phyllis Cook. Bradley. Salford protecting their box well. Right at the end of this first half. So far, so good for Graham Alexander and Salford City. They find themselves in front in this crucial promotion final. Emmanuel diaz with the only goal of the game so far, coming at the thoughts of Chris Hargreaves, Grant Holt and Joby McEnough with Matt Smith. But at the break at Wembley, it is filed nil, Salford City won. for both these clubs. Opportunities like this don't come around that often. The National League notoriously difficult to get out of. But it's Salford City who have the advantage, but it is a slender advantage, Adam. It certainly is, and I think it wasn't really, I'd say, the best first half. Certainly the goal was a little bit lucky there, but they took it so very, very well. I think what the boys were saying at half-time is that Salford just need to offer a little bit more going forward to Dias Arue, and they just can't leave him isolated up front against Tony Cliff and Burn. And that extra pass in the final third for Fylde is going to be vitally important, like we saw with Andy Bond's shot into Horton, a little ball around the corner, but they can't come back in front for 45 minutes because Fylde will find the back of the net if they keep doing what they're doing. But just need to move it a little bit more in the final third. 
Francis Angle, no changes from either manager at half-time, it's as we were. Horton, Rowe and Rees and Bradley are all in the middle here. Just took it on too much maybe there, Horton. Up it comes here to Diasarua. Redden. Whitehead is forward here as well, he's central. Wide is Redmond, Diasarua. Run back for file by Filiska. So whatever happens here, both clubs can look back on seasons of progress and improvement. They've been accounting for their much publicised financial clout to finish third in their first season in the National League. A fine achievement by Zolfer. They could have a chance here with Maputa. Looking for the room for the shots. Taken on by Whitehead, two threw themselves in the way of that for Fylde. Maynard. Wiseman, Dissel, away! Close to a second for the Amis. That's a brilliant chance there for Dissel, I thought the chance had gone, really, because when Mafuta got the ball on the edge of the box, he had Redmond on the left-hand side, and he doesn't quite do it. But when they get the ball across, he's a cross-burn, and that puts you in the advantage as a centre-forward. You can see him just get across there, but he couldn't quite angle the header towards goal. That is a massive chance. Uh, they thought it was going in. As did many of us inside. Wembley already has one today. Diasarue. Might have got a goal that would have settled the nerves somewhat for Salford City early into the second half. The former Sheffield Wednesday youth product is Francis Angle. Danny Rose stretching the play here for Andy Bond. Filiska. Bond with the flick inside. Tony Cliff. Francis Angol, good direct running here from Francis Angol. Is the some end product? Horton with the shots, and Reed is there, but it's just taken away from him by Pier Gianni. And there's a foul on Redmond, free kick to Salford. It's fine margins, isn't it? So the deflection put Dia Saru away for the goal, and this time... Almost fell to Alex Reed to get the shot towards goal. Good attacking run, though, from Francis Angol down the outside. This was a chance. It's a massive chance as well, just because he got the run on Neil Bird, got in front of him, just needed to direct the header a little bit better, and it would have been a goal. Went forward by Maynard. Just kept in by Rowe. Gianni. Thousands of miles travelled up and down the country by players and supporters, hundreds of hours dedicated. It comes down to this next 40 minutes or so now, possibly more if extra time is required. The Football League for the winner, back to square one for the loser. Could hardly be more cutthroat, could it? But that's the playoffs. Why we love them. That's a Ruiz first half goal, the difference at the moment at Wembley. The goal scoring centre half, Pier Gianni, one of those forward here for the Amis. Hogan's ball into the box. Tony Cliff got it clear. Torre. Over towards Whitehead, but couldn't grow enough to put something on that, the former Macclesfield man. Also with West Ham and Wigan previously. Is that kept in? Oh, the Salford fans. Didn't think so, but play goes on, and it's Francis Angol for fight.
Bradley. Played it against Pond as Redmond finds Tora. Good run here by Redmond. Can he find a telling cross? He's got two in the box to aim at. Decides to play it back instead here to Torre. Redmond hit first time by Piagiani. And it's hung in the air and it's punched clear by the keeper. And Whitehead onto his left foot. And Maynard! Grants his hand goal with an important touch. It's great play all round. Great, great play, but you have to give credit to Francis Angold to be brave and throw your body in the way of the ball. But that's just brilliant composure there from Danny Whitehead. That's what he can do. And then unselfishly puts it off to Maynard. I mean, there's a call for handball there, but in my opinion, no chance. Seventh minute of the second half. Salford. Knocking on the door somewhat here at Wembley as they seek a second. Piagiani, Hogan, all up from the back. And it's in! It's a second! It's Piagiani for Salford! Scored the goal in the semi-final. He got ten in the regular season. He's at it again! A Wembley goal for Piagiani. And it's a two-goal cushion now for Graham Alexander Salford. Can't say how big this goal is now in the context of this massive, massive game. Just gets the run on Neil Byrne. They waited on the edge of the 18-yard box. It's just outside of your picture, and he's free. And you cannot allow a free header from six yards out for Carl Piagiani. He's done it time and time again this season, and when it's mattered, he's done it again. I think it's fair to say they enjoyed that. It's a long way back now for Files. I do need something now, Adam. Something from somewhere. Two set plays that have cost them this afternoon so far. Well, the centre back now is Salford's second highest scorer in all competitions this season. Mentioned he got his 11th of the campaign in the playoff semi final. There's number 12. What a season he's had. He hadn't actually played at National League level, Piagiani, since 2013. Rowe, how they need a performance from their talisman now, Fire. Francis Angol's cross. Redmond with a hurried clearance. Pushed by Bradley on Torre. I think they've let Fard off the hook massively. Into these big games, you need to defend set plays better, and they've not done that. Some Devante Rodney coming on here. <laughs> Ten minutes into the second half here, it's Gus Mafuta who is being taken off by Graham Alexander. An interesting change. Be a bit more tactical considering the game. I think the substitution was always going to be made even before the second goal. Just seems to be a little bit higher up and offer a little bit more support centrally to the Isarue. He's done well. I need to come back into the fourth day again, isn't he? Another local lad, if you like. Salford squad comes from down the road in Manchester, headed by Pia Gianni. Tora. Still time for players in yellow to make a difference to keep their dream alive, but they are going to have to be doing more here, the foul players. 
James Hardy is going to be coming on here for Dave Challoner's side. And England Sea International actually turns 23 today. It's been named in the England Sea squad for the game against Estonia in Tallinn next month. A similar player to Nick Horton, who's come on in that first half. Good on the ball, and what he does while he runs with it. So that will certainly get fired higher up the field. But with Horton and Hardy coming on, now they have to keep the ball better. Both these sides very used to promotions. Fylde have won four in ten seasons. Salford have gone up in three of the last four seasons. And at the moment, it's looking like four in five for the Amis, unless there's a dramatic turnaround in this promotion final. The one thing that Fylde do still have is plenty of time. And there's been one or two comebacks in football just recently, you might have noticed. Tony Cliff. Crowsdale. Now Tunnicliffe. They've worked this well. And again, there's just no cutting edge in the final third. It's not quite happening, is it? For Fard and Dave Challoner. We get this change now that we've been expecting, and it's. Reed, who's to be withdrawn for the introduction of James Hardy, he was originally at Oldham as a youngster, then went to Manchester City in 2012, was released in 2015. This is the goal that separates the teams now in this second half. Can't allow him that much time, can you? What a season he's had. So good that he's made it into Adam Virgo's team of the year. <laughs> he's been absolutely outstanding, he really has. And split opinions at the start of the year, especially with two of our pundits today. But you have to say, as the season's gone on, he just, I think he's adapted to the league really, really well. I think going to a back three has helped him as well. But from set plays, he's been absolutely superb. He attacks the ball, and it's a timing of the header as well, which I've been really impressed with. Played out wide here to Bond, but play pulled back for the foul on the man just introduced, Hardy. Well, Fylder aside, in need of some inspiration here. Can somebody provide it for them? Over half an hour still to go here. Francis Angol. Deep delivery, that just sums things up for yep. the coasters right now. I think you've just summed it up there, really. I was just about to say the same thing for his side. During that game last season against Bournemouth, first 20 minutes when it just didn't go right for them. Yeah. Now it's almost gone 60 minutes where things just haven't quite clicked. And in the second half, you expect more from them, and they've offered nothing so far. Tactical change with Danny Rowe down the middle. What a big day it is in the Premier League tomorrow. The title to be decided will be across all the action up and down the country. Mark Dugac presenting BT Sports score from 2.30 tomorrow. That's on what? Udo Tula. Diasaruwe calling for it. It's a massive goal now. 
I'm not saying it's game over, as you said, what's happened this week. He gets forward really, really well. Nine times, times out of ten, cross goes in for someone to go and attack. And on the one occasion that Jay Lynch does not want this to go in that far post area, it happens. The rub of the green, you have to say that. Luck, yes, but they won't care. Three goals, three different scorers. Salford City on the brink. Everything is going their way. Rodney's chasing it at Kane Lynch. How's this got away from fire so badly? <laughs> you look at all three goals, Adam. The first one, didn't defend it properly. Second one, free head up. And then the third one, you know Lady Luck's not on your side today when that creeps in at that far post. They've just not done enough, have they, really, in this game so far. They've not shown what they're all about. And when you need your big players in your big games, Adam, they're not there yet. That's the most disappointing thing for Dave Challenger. Sacrificing a forward to bring on an extra midfielder. I think shows how wrong it's gone for him today so far. Baird's looking pretty relaxed, isn't she? But well, for somebody who was there pre-class of 92 days when she was trying to think of ways to get more people into the stadium, they were getting crowds of 250. It must be wonderful for her to be at Wembley, to see Salford City on the brink now of the Football League. You know, all the committee members, 14 of them who were there before, the investment came in, they're all still at the club, still very much involved. They've retained much of the fabric of the pre-class of 92 days. Horton. I have to say, coming here today, talking to people as we always do, Adam, before these big games about, I and mean, you're always asked the question, who do you think's going to win? I never saw there being three goals in this game. Oh, not at all, I thought it'd be a lot tighter. I thought Fire would be playing better than what they've done. Typical performance from Salford, in my opinion. Defending deep, defending narrow. And a little bit of pace in that final third, and so Whitehead coming in, that extra midfielder as well, to offer a little bit of support to Diaz Arrue, but be disappointed with Fard so far, Adam. Not been good enough. Hard. Francis Angol on the outside of it. Francis Angol with the ball in. Panicky clearance from Salford. It drops here for Francis Angol. Another cross into the box, but too much on it for Bradley. A winning habit, a winning culture at Salford right now. League titles in two of their last four seasons. Not league title this season, but could still be a promotion. Oh, a chance there for Horton, a really good chance as well. And then the chances you get out of now, playing a debt, you have to put the back of the net. Can't afford missed kicks or hitting it over the bar or wide of the post. Every chance that Fylde have now, they have to hit the back of the net. Row. Horton, Philiskirk, Hardy, Horton, the build-up plays nice, needs to be a sting in the tail for fire. Francis Angol and Danny Rowe, and Rowe gets on the turn, couldn't find the room for the shot. For a corner, it's better from five. Well, 
twice this week. I don't need to remind you, we've seen teams in the Champions League come from three goals down. Well, they had a bit more time than Fire do have on their hands at the moment. And it would be the most remarkable comeback we've ever seen in a National League promotion final. Head injury here for Hogan. And Graham Alexander readying a substitution. So it's the FA Cup final here at Wembley a week today. Manchester City against Watford. Our programme begins at 4 o'clock. You can also see that in 4K. And then it's non-league finals day. Uh, the day after, Chertsey Town against Cray Valley in the Vars final. That's up first from midday. And then after that, filed back here again, just in Edinburgh's Leighton Orient. The league champions, their opposition next Sunday, 3.45 for that on BT Sport 1 and in 4K. Good to see Hogan quickly back to his feet. We'll also have the annual uh, Vanarama National League review of the season. I can tell you that's been uh, worked on right now. Always a good watch. Next Sunday, 6.45 for that. I'm sure Bex and Co will be <laughs> tuning in for that. Coming off. I thought he changed the game when he came on against Eastley, Danny Whitehead, and I thought he deserved his start this afternoon. I thought it was a, an area that Graham Alexander had to bring him in to combat Fylde's quality in that midfield. It's a bit of freshness now with Mark Shelton on in that midfield area now. Won't get forward as much as what Danny Whitehead would have done. They don't really need to now in this position. A lot of contrast in emotions between the respective supporters. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's a side there, wasn't it, last year that got in the playoffs and have done it again this year. Taunts, uh, they seem to have learnt the lessons of last season as well when they rather limply went out against Ball and Wood in the Eliminator. They're much better against Harrogate in this season's Eliminator. And they did very well indeed away at Solly Hull. There's all that hard work, all those months of trekking up and down the country. We're going to come to nothing for the coasters. They've got 20 minutes, just whatever we get added on at the end of the game to try and turn the tide here. Francis Amber. Rowe. Hardy. Phyllis Girt wants it. Phyllis Girt gets it. And he's driven in the shots. He says it was a corner and the referee's given one. He's got a crack and goal, didn't he, against Solihull Moors. It's a couple of days ago and now almost got the, another one in succession. Moved it a lot better and when that happens you've got to shoot from distance because the ball out wide's not really working. Corner well claimed by Chris Neal. Seems to have been hurt in the process of claiming that. with Maynard. Well, things could not be going much better for Graham Alexander. So that Adam Rooney starting today. 
Had to make a couple of dilemmas tactically and the personnel wise as well. reading an interview with Graham Alexander where he, he talked about how David Moyes was a big influence on him as a player. I wonder if he took things from David Moyes as a, as a coach as well. He said when David Moyes became his manager at the time in his playing career, he was rather, in his own words, treading water a bit. And it was Moyes who really lit, relit the fire, kicked on as a player under Moyes' management. something that both these clubs have really benefited from this season. Five players in both squads started 40 or more of the 46 regular season games. Bond. Horton. Oh, Salford player, Villisca. Horton's cross over towards Rowe. The changes that Chandler has made with Horton and Hardy coming on. Might he work in Salford because all they want to do now is play narrow. And that read on and the way that Danny Rowe picks up different positions left, right, and centre. They don't really have an out ball when they get across in. So they're trying to work it across that midfield area to get a shot on. So it's working in Salford's favour at the moment. The way the things are going. They need a bit of luck now, don't they? They need a goal from somewhere. Certainly not something really that have been a problem for far. They were the top scorers in the league last season. And they got 72 goals in the regular season this campaign as well. A youngster, a teenager, coming on here. Tom Crawford, who was on loan from Notts County. Andy Bond, the player, being taken off. with Chester Crawford will celebrate his 20th birthday the day after next weekend's FA Trophy final when father back here to face Leighton Orient this as it stands by the way would be the biggest ever winning margin in a National League promotion final it's only ever been a, a winning margin of, of two goals previously was was the highest number Is 3-0 a fair reflection of the game that we've seen so far? It's been a weird game, Adam, honestly. I don't think that Salford have, you know, really bombarded Jay Lynch's goal too often. I don't think far of often enough in that final third, just at the moment, to really test Chris Neil enough. Not really seen him being made in this second half, so it is a bit of an odd scoreline where both sides haven't really created too much within that final third. Who'd have thought that a team with the National League's top scorer, we'd be talking about them lacking punch in the final third. Here's Francis Angle. Now Danny Rowe really hasn't been able to affect the game thus far for the Coasters. Villas Kirk gets it wide to Bradley. Crawford. Bradley. Good movement from Phyllis Skirt, it's well read by Maynard. This quarter of an hour then at Wembley. Bradley with the cross over towards Rowe, good claim by Neil, who then got a, a nudge off Rowe. And we're going to see Rory Gaffney coming on. For Salford, former Bristol Rovers player. Spent the last four seasons in the Football League since moving over from his native island. It's come against Tony Cliff. Looking 
forward to Daniel Tarty as it stands. Only something quite out of the ordinary comeback of spectacular proportions can deny Salford City a place in the Football League now. Goes towards Piagiani. Nice. Nice sides know, don't they? For a player, a defender who's gone into double figures for goals this season, they know the threat's coming, but they struggle to stop it. Yeah, I mean, it's just that little touch there off Burn in the end. Gets the ball in there from Torre. It's Redmond who's come across to take this. on it. What a change that we've been expecting Gaffney to come on here. They were running promotion from the League 2 to League 1 with Bristol Rovers back in 2016. And a real ovation here for the man who got the opening goal, Manny Diasaru. Yeah, he's done well, isn't he, today? I think he, what I like about him, Adam, today, he's just worked tirelessly. Hasn't had too much to feed off, but he's kept both centre halves. He's kept both centre halves busy in the off throughout this game so far. Took his goal really well. And to keep him out of the side, so I thought Rui Gaffin started the season really well. To come back from low and keep him out of the side shows what an impact he's had. in the middle, Gaffney's in the middle. So towards that back post where Shelton was coming in there. Horton. Crawford. Crowsdale. Danny Rowe has come out wide here. But Bradley has gone on the outside. Bradley with the crossover, well, read by me. We need that to go back to someone to get the goal. Just looking at Farrell's body language after. Chris Neal got it. Seemed very dejected now. City, the opener, yeah. a defensive error to the opener, scored by Dia Sarue, then the second. Yeah. Thumping header from Pia Gianni, Salford second highest scorer this season. I'm quite sure he almost certainly didn't mean that, Torre, but that was the third. He seems to like scoring on BT, doesn't he, Torre? Yeah, that's the third this season he scored on BT Sport. Francis Angle, Hardy. Nothing going for Fyatt. Here's Gaffney. Burnley Gaffney in a straight race. Is it too simplistic, Adam, to just say it's been one of those days for Fyatt, or have there been? mistakes tactically in terms of personnel or anything that you picked up on that's particularly gone wrong? I would say tactically that Dave Challenger's got it wrong this afternoon. I've almost picked the team that I would have expected to start today. Losing the burn, Burke, sorry, earlier on was a slight hindrance and he had to lose Bond in that central midfield area to go in at right back. But they've just not defended well enough from set plays, especially the first two. The third goal happens, that happens in football, you have to hold your hands up sometimes. But the first two goals he'll be looking at with great disappointment. Hardy now to Phyllis Kirk. Into the side, Matty. And the fired 
defence. And they stand opposite. Thought that had gone in. Well, they work it really well. Phyllis Kirk picking up a right hand side position. Cut back there for Hardy. Couldn't quite direct it towards goal. And they're still getting behind their side, those who've made the, made the journey from the Wild Coast. As the sun about to set on their promotion hopes. success story that Salford have been since the arrival of the class of 92 the Amis were playing in the eighth tier of English football as recently as 2015 and they are certainly a club in a hurry now to becoming the first club to be promoted in consecutive seasons from sixth tier to the Football League since the National League was set up. Filed themselves, had a real go at it last season, beaten by Boreham Wood in the playoffs after finishing a very respectable seventh. And it's easy to say, and I understand why some do say it, Adam, about the money that has been given to Graham Alexander which is significant for this level of football. It's one thing having money, it's another building a squad and using that money wisely. Exactly, I mean, it's one thing to have it, but you still need to get a fine tune out of the players and play into a certain thing. And he'll be under massive pressure because the more money he spends, the more is expected of him to get him out of the division. You know, he, he wouldn't be given two seasons to get them out. I think that's why he's done exceptionally well this year to deal with that pressure. Francis Angol gets it to row here Not the ball behind this was read by Toure and now it's Redmond for the Amis and the turnaround it's been for him personally it's sunny five months ago that Redmond was without a club and been released by Manchester United last summer. He even hired a personal trainer, Devontae Redmond, while he was without a club to keep himself fit and sharp. And that call did come, and it did eventually come from Salford City. That dream is evaporating in front of our eyes here. Last five minutes. Row. Crowsdale. Phyllis Kirk. Phyllis Kirk. 
Francis Angle. Good run by Francis Angle. Crowsdale and Rowe waiting in the box. It's over towards Rowe. Good defending from Pierre Gianni. We've said that a few times this season. Just needed that, didn't they? Good positioning to open his body out nicely, knowing that Danny Rowe was behind him. Had to fight the ball really well there. Tunnicliffe got something on it, but. And White. The idea to buy and transform Salford City was born out of a chat on a train journey from London between Gary Neville and Ryan Giggs back in 2013. The club was at step four then. Now they're on the brink of the Football League. They have a new stadium, full-time employees, an academy, an education programme, a women's team, a foundation, and there'll also be a university soon too. Peter Lynn, of course. When we talk about the class of 92, it does help as well when you've got a billionaire who's uh, part... I never thought I would see the day that a billionaire was, was part of a, a non-league football club. It's quite astonishing, really. And they were the two that had that conversation on that train back in 2013, back from London that I was just talking about. Amazing what has grown out of that conversation. Whether you're a fan of the way that they've done things, Salford City, whether you're a fan of the, the money or not, which I can understand those that feel that perhaps it's not a level playing field, but they've done things steadily and professionally and properly. Salford City, that's hard to argue against, nor is their commitment to the, the local area. To be fair, don't you, and balanced in discussing Salford City because a lot of people have a, a strong opinion either way. Yeah, I mean, everyone will have their opinions, of course, they will, and sometimes it'll be the wrong opinion that you don't actually see what actually goes on behind the scenes, and especially the class, they, they put their own money into the club, Adam. It's not run on anyone else. They've had good careers and they put it back into non league football, which has been excellent. Let's get Adam Virgo's man of the match. Well, I think he's been excellent in the midfield this afternoon. Morris Maynard, I think he's just been... The work rate that he's shown off the ball today has been excellent, and that's the area that Fard had to be quiet with. And I think he's had an outstanding game this afternoon. He's maybe used some of that experience of being on the losing side in a promotion final. He was beaten by Forest Green and a, a Tranmere player back in 2017. He said he told his teammates to remain calm, don't let the occasion get the better of you. Don't play the occasion, I think, was his key message. Play the game. A player who's gone through many non-league sides, says he's gone the long way round to reach the Football League. Lois Maynard, but like his Salford teammates, they are very close now. We're expecting four minutes of added time. Salford so nearly there, a club that's never played in the Football League, now on the brink of achieving it. A moment, 79 years in the making for a club founded in 1940. Decades of hard work about to come to fruition, with, we should say, the help, of course, of some significant investment in the last six years. But it's a growing fan base, a growing club, no wonder they are smiling now. And chairman Karen Baird has put in some long hours behind the scenes. Rockney's chasing this, out comes Jay Lynch. Some Wembley joy for Fylde this season. They'll be back here 
A week tomorrow for the FA Trophy final when they'll play Leighton Orient. So even though this has gone against them, and we know which would have been the greater priority for Dave Challoner, they've still got that one more chance. Yeah, I mean, it's still been a great season for them. Progression on from last year. From the preliminary playoff games into this promotion final to date. Just disappointing for him, I really do feel for him. He's offered so much to the National League and what he's offered to Fylde. They've been a great watch this season, but unfortunately today, we just didn't see the file that we've seen throughout the season. And the first two goals he'd be most disappointed with. And in the second half, they just haven't shown enough to really keep Chris Neal on his toes. But they'll learn from it and they'll come back even stronger next year. Throw in off Crow's down. Well, they started the regular season as the firm favourites with the bookmakers, Salford City, to win the title. Not quite able to get up that way. They've gone the longer routes, Salford City, but they are going to be a football league club next season. And who knows where they could go from there? The championship is the stated target eventually. Very much a club in a hurry. Is it quite kept in by Burke? He never lets up, does he? No, he doesn't. Even now to the bitter end, a minute ago, he's still shouting instructions out for his players. Minimum of four minutes added on, we're into the final minute of that four. When's he going to allow himself a smile? <laughs> and they're readying themselves for the big celebration, including the man, the top scorer who missed out today through injury, Adam Rooney. Frustration, I think, coming out there from Danny Wright. Not been his day, is it? Not was made on his shoulders this afternoon to produce the goods, and maybe sometimes you rely on someone on heavily, and he doesn't turn up. You need players around you. He's done it time and time again for Fall, but just hasn't quite been his day today. City has got them promoted full time at Wembley. Filed nil, Salford City three. Well, Files dejected there. Hopes have evaporated here at such. The end of a, a long season, it's a second campaign, Adam, a playoff disappointment in a row for them. It is, and they were excellent in the two playoff games against Harrogate and Solly Holmores to get here. But Salford, congratulations to them, the Football League side, and they are going to get a good Football League side now, the EFL.
steps they go something that so many players have done over the years to receive silverware that's the view that the owners have they'll be savoring every single second of this the first team since this league was formed back in 79 to go from the sixth tier to the football league in back-to-back -back seasons <laughs> Four promotions in five campaigns, Adam. It's been magnificent. As the boys were saying with Graham Alexander, has to take a massive amount of credit. Yes, you get the finances and you get the money to go and buy your squad, but you need that squad to gel. And he made a big decision halfway through the season by bringing the likes of Mafatu back in and, and Maynard as well. And went a little bit bigger, went three at the back and it made a massive, massive difference. And he, you know, Danny Lloyd wasn't even in the squad today. You know, that shows the changes that he has made and, and fully deserved in their performance as well. I thought it was a really important point that Grant Holt was making, Adam, just after the game where he said that there was a point in the season where he was getting a lot of criticism of Graham Alexander and he said, I remember, that at the time it was the support of those behind the scenes, the support of the owners, their faith in him that helped them get through that real tough period. I think Graham's an excellent manager. I thought when he was at Scunthorpe and they were in the playoffs and he ended up losing his job, I thought that was unfortunate. So they knew they were getting a good manager. And the class of 92 have had a manager throughout, one manager throughout their career. And they have to back him all the way with the signings. And you will have to be patient. And when you're patient sometimes and you get the manager the belief, these are the results you can get. Well, this, what these Salford players would have dreamed of. Now it's for real, now they are going up. It's a hard, hard watch for these vile players. You can only hope from their perspective that they will come back st even stronger next season. But these Salford City players have, well, there's no two ways about it. They've written themselves into club folklore. The first Salford City players to achieve Football League promotion. Salford-born captain Liam Hogan there, who just puts his medal on. That green there, who was not used today, with an embrace for the chairman, Karen Baird, who works so exceptionally hard behind the scenes. Now they await the moment, the trophy lift. Some more medals to be given out by Brian Barwick, the National League chairman. Really have had a, a good season, Salford City, their first remember at this level. It was some going really to finish third, even despite all of the well publicised investment. the players they've gone the long route but some say this is the best way to get promoted at Wembley a showpiece occasion I've got to get the choreography right here cameras ready for the big moment there's the piece of silverware that this has all been about today
reach the promised land of the Football League. League two awaits in August. But now it's about enjoying the moment, about soaking it all in. Sold for today's winners at Wembley and they'll remember it for some time. They will do it. It's a massive achievement for the football club and huge congratulations from myself to them. They've had the ups and they've had the up and downs this season. But together, they showed up today. They showed their quality as a squad to get the result, to get themselves into the Football League. And now many people will say the hard work starts now. To then progress on, you've seen Danny Cowley at Lincoln, you've seen what Tranmere and Forest Green have done, you've seen what Bristol Rovers have done coming out of this league. National League clubs going into the Football League, Adam, can push on. And I fully expect Salford City to be doing that next season. The target, they say, is the championship. I wouldn't put it past them. I think this is, I think the first club we can possibly see go very, very far coming out of the National League. They've got the infrastructure in place. They've got the right manager, which is the most important thing for me. And now they've got a belief, they've got a direction, and also they've got an identity. One thing that we saw last summer after they got promoted from National League North was that they were pretty ruthless. They were ruthless with the managers, the joint managers they left. They were ruthless with many members of the squad. They went into double figures in terms of new signings. Do you anticipate that they will be equally as ruthless this summer? Could we still see a lot of departures from I think you will do, and, and that's the harsh reality of it, that some of these players that have worked so hard to get them into the Football League may not get a chance to play for Salford in the Football League. There's no sentiment now. It's about the results of getting yourself higher up the division and get yourself out of League Two into League One and get yourself to that championship. But a lot of these players today take a massive amount of credit. And I'm especially pleased with Graham because he's a decent guy and there's a lot of hard work behind the scenes that we don't see. And they fully deserve it. They said upon his appointment, Graham Alexander, sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. But the possibilities at Salford City are boundless. Is what Graham Alexander said. Salford City promoted. Let's get some more reaction, shall we, from Finchside?